Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to create this fun little pressure gauge animation and I really hope you will enjoy this one. And if you do, don't forget to leave the like. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe. Now let's jump right in turn to Blender file and first of all, let's select the light and the cube, press X and choose the lead and we can leave the camera in place. And now let's press Shift A and we are going to start with the circle. And now let's tap into the edit mode and press E then Z and just extrude it on the Z axis like this. Then press F to fill and I to inset to create a rim like this and then E to extrude down again. And let's go a little bit lower like this. Now let's press Shift D and then immediately Z to move the duplicate up a little bit like this. Now let's step out and let's go to the modifiers panel and let's add the bevel modifier and let's increase segments to two and reduce the amount a little bit like this. And then let's add subdivision surface modifier and increase levels to two. Right click and shade smooth. So this will serve as a base um, for whatever we are going to model next. So let's tap back in. And with this face still selected, we can press P and separate that selection into a new object. Tab out, select that new object, tab back in. And let's enable X-ray view so we can see what's happening there. Press A to select all and press E to extrude this down. And then X and delete the bottom face. We don't need that. But now you can see since we added the modifier before and only then separated the object, you can see the same modifiers are on both of those. So now we are able to reuse the geometry and have those modifiers pre-applied on those pieces of geometry, which is very handy and quite effective. So let's disable the X-ray view. And now we can select this outer object, tab into the edit mode, press three for face select, alt click this loop and press shift D to duplicate, right click to release. And again, P and enter to separate into a new object. You can see it right here in the outliner. So we can tab out select that new object, tap back in, press A to select all and E to extrude. And again, as you can see, we have the same modifiers pre-applied. So now just to be safe, we can recalculate normal. So press A and shift N to recalculate them. Now, if you tap out, you can see the smooth geometry we have there. And additionally, you can modify the amount here if you want this to be a little bit sharper. If you feel like this is too fast for you or you don't understand some core concepts, make sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills to low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration, textured environments and much more. And I build the courses as creative projects, each with its own style. And every time there's a new technique or something needs explaining, we stop for a while and you get an in-depth explanation. But in the end, you still get a full project result. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. So now let's create a glass here. So let's select, for example, this piece, tab into the edit mode and just select this face, press Shift D, right click to release, and again P and separate the selection. Now we can tab out, select that new object, tab back in, press A to select all, and press G then Z and move this up a little bit like this, and then press S to scale it outside a little bit. And we don't need the bell there, so let's just delete it right here, but we'll leave the subdivision in place. And now press I to inset, like halfway, and then press G then Z, and move this up and then press ctrl b and create the bevel and we can increase number of segments with the mouse wheel and create a little bit more curved surface like this and just confirm and now we can add solidify modifier and right after the subdivision now we can tab out and here as you can see if you modify the thickness we'll get this solid piece of glass there but to be sure it's shaded correctly, we can right click and shade auto smooth and this will get added as a smooth by angle modifier right here with 30 degrees, which is enough. So that's okay for now, but let's press H and hide this piece so it doesn't get in the way. And let's now create insides of this gauge. So again, we can reuse some of the geometry. So let's select this object, tab into the edit mode, select the top face, press shift D and then S to scale this down like this. And then let's press G then Z and move this up a little bit and E to extrude. And then we can press L hovering over this, press P and separate into a new object again. And now select this face again, hold Shift S and snap cursor to select it. They'll make sure that it's snapped here on the surface. So we can tab out, let's press Shift A and create a new plane. 
and let's press 7 on the numpad for a top view. Tap into the edit mode and press S to scale this down and S then Y to scale on Y axis. And then we can press 1 for vertex select, select these two verts and press G then Y and move this up and scale it down by pressing S. So we get this nice handle there. And now we can press Ctrl B then B to create a vertex bevel and reduce number of cuts with the mouse wheel like this. And then select the bottom ones, press Ctrl B then V to create the same thing on the bottom, but we can add few more segments like this. And now we can press A to select all and E to extrude. And again, press A and Shift N to recalculate normals. And we can move this up a little bit. So press G then Z and move this up more like this. Tab out and let's disable the X-ray view. And here we'll need to add that bevel manually. So let's add bevel modifier increase number of segments and reduce the amount and we'll press ctrl 1 to add subdivision modifier with one level of subdivision right click and shade smooth and one final thing to do is to create like these dials around so let's press shift a let's add a plane let's look from the top by pressing 7 again tap into the edit mode and let's scale it down and again we can help ourselves by enabling x-ray view let's scale it down even more and press g then y and move it up while leaving the origin point here in the middle. And press S then Y to scale it up on Y axis as well. Now let's press E to extrude. And we can press Ctrl I to invert the selection. Press X and delete faces. So the bottom will be open. So now if we tab out and disable the X-ray view. You can add bevel modifier. Increase segments and reduce the amount. And you can see the bottom stays flat. And we can either just shade this smooth or apply one level of subdivision by pressing Ctrl 1. I leave that up to you. So right click, shade smooth. And now we'll duplicate this few times. So let's press Alt D, then R and Z. So we're duplicating and rotating around Z axis at the same time. Let's enter 30 for degrees and let's confirm. And before hitting anything else, let's press Shift R few times to repeat the operation. Remember this will work only if you press Alt D and then immediately R then Z and 30 degrees and confirm it must be part of one single operation. Um, only then the Shift R will repeat the whole process, including the rotation. And now we can just select everything, hold Shift, select the outer part here, press Ctrl P and parent to object. So now we can move this as a single object and let's add some background. Press Shift S and snap cursor to world origin and then Shift A and add the plane. And let's scale it up like this. Now, if you press zero, you will look through the camera, but the angle is a little bit too sharp. So let's press N for the side panel and in the view settings, we'll enable camera to view. So now we're able to use our viewport controls to control the camera. So let's rotate it a little bit like this. So we get the better view of our gauge, just like that. And now don't forget to disable this. So you're freely able to move this and return to your camera by pressing 0 on an amp at any time. Now let's press N to collapse the side panel and we can press Ctrl B and limit the preview only for the camera bounce. So then if you go render and switch to cycles, I will switch to GPU, enable the noising and GPU for the denoising here and reduce the samples to something like 64. That will be enough for the animation. Now if you hold Z and choose rendered, you will get only this part in the middle rendered, but it's too dark. So let's press Shift A and let's add some light. And this will be the area light. Press G then Z and move this up. But now I want to go to the light settings and switch this to rectangle. And this will allow us to change the shape of the light. And I want something like this here. And now let's increase the power to something like 100 or maybe not so much. We'll see how this works. And we can, of course, move it up and down and let's move it to the side a little bit like this and then press shift d and duplicate one more and this will create a nice reflection so let's unhide our final object here and we didn't make it part of the rest of the object so hold shift select the other part press ctrl p and parent and now let's select this one here and in the material settings create a new one and choose transmission and increase the weight all the way to one and then roughness to something like 0.05 and this will make it 
transparent and you will see the reflection of these lights here and then you can play with the position those and check for the reflections that you like so for example i want to move this one maybe higher up and maybe more to the side we'll see about that just in a minute and then let's press shift a and create another area light press g and z move it up and then G and Shift Z to move it on X and Y axis and move it back here. Maybe a little bit lower. And let's increase to something like 500. I want like a strong backlight coming from there. And now if you move it up and down, it will start creating these reflections on our glass. And it will make it look a little bit nicer and more flashy. So now let's add some materials. This will be fairly simple. So I want this to be like really soft, bright type of render so we'll create one main material for the background maybe darken it a tiny bit and apply the same material to the parts of our gauge now here the rim could be metallic so let's create a new material let's push the metallic all the way to one and then make it a little bit darker and reduce the roughness but here in the specular settings we can increase the anisotropic filtering and I think it will, again, give us more flashy reflections. And now we can select the handle, create a new material. And here we want to add some really accented color like red and reduce the roughness. And for the dials, I think something dark. And again, with a little bit of a less roughness. And now select the background for the dial and let's create the new material and let's go all the way white here. So I think this looks nice so far. So let's select the camera and in the camera settings, let's enable depth of field and in the viewport display limits. And now we are able to move the distance here until we see this cross and let's focus on that handle there somewhere here and reduce the app stop to something like 1.2. And then let's enable camera to view again. I added it to my quick favorites under Q block camera to view. So again, if you go side panel and in the view settings you can right click here and add to quick favorites and add to quick favorites and then you will have it on your queue menu as well so now i'm able to change the view or the angle of the camera to something like this okay now let me disable this and then press g then x on the light and move it to the side a little bit more I don't want it to be so overexposed from the top. So something like this will look much nicer. You can see you're able to much better see the content of this. So now let's select this middle part right here and let's add the same metallic material. And now for the animation, let's expand this. I will modify this to 120 frames and in the output settings, choose the frame rate of 30 and now I'll just select the handle let's press r then z and rotate it all like here and then press n for the side panel again and right click the z rotation and insert single keyframe and now we can remove some of these on the bottom so just select them press x and choose the lead and now let's move to frame 20 let's press r then z and move somewhere here right click and insert single keyframe and now we can select this keyframe, press Shift D to move it somewhere here, for example. And then select the first one, press Shift D and move it all the way towards the end. So that will close our loop. And now if you press Ctrl Tab, hovering over the timeline, you will get the graph view. And you can press A to select all keyframes and then period on an unpad to focus on your animation. Or you can hold Ctrl and move with the middle mouse to kind of stretch your view here now i want a little bit of a randomness here so like the pressure is not steady so let's select this channel this rotation channel and in the modifiers let's add some noise but we'll limit the frame range so let's check the restrict frame range checkbox and let's go for start and let's enter 20 for start and 120 to end and blend in around 10 frames in 10 frames out and you can see you get this nice behavior but it's a little bit too erratic so we'll need to modify the scale to something like 5 
so it's a little better spread out here and then you can you know work with the offset to get the curves you like now let's play back the animation i will switch here to solid view so i can see it in real time select the glass press h to hide and let's play it back and i really like it uh, maybe the ending is a little bit too sudden so we can select this frame press g and move it a little bit further apart so now this looks a little bit better and now to add some more dynamics to the animation we can animate the camera so let's select the camera outline here and hovering over the timeline again press ctrl tab and now let's right click to location and insert keyframes let's select the keyframes press shift d to move them on 120 on frame 121 so it loops and now we'll create some in between frames like for example frame 20 let's enable recording and just press g and move the camera slightly to the side not too much you can help yourselves by holding shift they will move in smaller increments and then we'll just move you know to whatever frame we like and press g again and do these subtle movements so it will create this like a little bit shaky camera effect like this and now don't forget to disable the recording because it can mess up your scene if you start moving things around and then let's play it back and we get this little bit of a camera shake and the movement of the handle let me preview this in cycles with the glass active and now i can see the glass is a little bit too dark so go to the material settings and increase it all the way to white or you can tint it for example you can add some color if you want you can play around with this and now in the world settings let's color those shadows a little bit by adding the environment light something cold and blue like this will work nicely and then you can play with the intensity as well and then in the render settings color management you can increase contrast settings to something like medium high and play with the exposure but overall this is the effect i was going for and you know if you want you can have like a bunch of different gauges animated around you can just select the outer one hold shift and hit right bracket a few times to select everything or you can just select it right here and then press alt d and shift z to duplicate on x and y axis and do it a few times you know so you get this nice pattern of gauges and then if you want to animate them differently for example you can select the handle on a different one and go object relations make single user and object animation and they will separate the animation from the original linked object so now if you press ctrl tab here in the graph editor you can select all of this and move it around and as you can see it will you know move at a uh, different values and then if you play it back you get a little bit different behavior and of course if you select the channel you can shift the offset so you will get a little bit different jittering there and it will not look so uniform and then finally if you want to render out your animation um, you can go to output settings and here change this to ffmpeg choose mp4 for encoder and then you know choose your folder right here and go render render animation and wait out your frames so yeah that's it for today's simple 3d animation and i really hope you enjoyed this one and again if you did please leave that like and if you're new around here and want to learn more hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day